Yes. So now back to that was the part where people actually care about. Um, keyboard protocols. So we'll get a little bit in intro. So I got into keyboards in 2007. Got some keyboards. Got two keyboards, Unicomp and Cherry Keyboard. Didn't know the forms were, didn't know anything like that. I was happy. <laughs> and uh, I was happy. A year went by, went to Japan, brought my keyboards with me, used a lemon of the office, and it didn't matter. The people in my office in Japan didn't care because we worked on dot matrix printers. <laughs> <laughs> it was loud. <sighs> um, but anyways, uh, I got bored at work, which happens often, and I get hobbies. <coughs> and I've discovered keyboards in Japan were interesting at the time, like yeah, cleverly and all, all those fun places. Came, went, went back, and I started scrounging up uh, these the e-waste piles for old keyboards at my university, and I kept getting these old and interesting keyboards like need switches. I, like, I want to use it though. Like, what do I do? Like, I, it's not PS2. Like, I can only go so far with your adapter. See, like an AT adapter to a PS2, <laughs> you go to USB, you know, this giant chain thing. But it only works for. To a certain level, if you go even older, you can't you can't do anything. You know? The company doesn't exist anymore. They haven't existed for like 20 years. Nobody cares because it was only one-off computer. Like, th those sorts of things. So I went to then go work for an, another company, and they had electronics lab. Like I had not at this point. I took oscilloscopes and did like labs in, in school. I did not understand anything. I just got my partner. Like I didn't do anything. I didn't know how to solder. I didn't. I could barely do use the resistor. Um, so basically, I worked at a company. I did the software there, but they had a real electronics lab. So I learned. I taught myself how to solder, and you know, oscilloscopes, logic analyzer, and I said, okay, I'll, I'll show a bit later. But there's a really good website called Keyboard Babble. Um, it's basically your bible whenever you look at protocols. Uh, I'll show you some of the pictures. They're, they're really impressive. I wish I could make fancy diagrams like that because it, it it actually makes trying to do this the first time, really easy. Because if you, we'll get into it, but if you understand what the protocol is, making something around it is way easier. What I'm gonna show today is actually, if you don't know what it is, what can you do? Um, and that, that, that's pretty much how it's gone. And so I was able to convert a bunch of keyboards. Some of them I could only do sort of, because they was really shitty. Some of them I could do really well. Um, but yeah. So this is, for a long time, this is the reason I was still on keyboards. I buy interesting keyboards just because it had a weird protocol, or I thought it had a weird protocol, so I could make a cool converter. Hasu does the same thing in Japan. He likes doing this stuff too. Um, so there's, I'm going to talk about a bit of electrical engineering stuff, um, actually closer to computer engineering. Um, this sort of thing is usually taught in second or third year. Um, and I'm, I'm basically this first slide is already jumping to second or third year, uh, so I'm going to try to explain this as simply as possible. You don't, you don't actually need to understand too much about electricity, but you have to understand more logic and when things go zero or one. There are two types of protocols based it, 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 in sort of computers when you do communication between two nodes or two different devices. There's parallel. And then there's serial. Oh, the oh, next page is a picture. But basically, parallel is just you have you're sending one thing on one wire. So you have a whole bunch of wires, and you're sending one zero or one on each wire. So if you wanted 100 megabytes, you uh, at one time you would send 100 million wires, <laughs> and you'd send all that data. Now, that's technically really fast if you can keep putting it back to back, but you, that's how much you have to do. And there's problems with that. How, of those 100 million wires, what if you messed one up? Um, that's, that's a problem. Like, how, how do you know if it's good or not? Uh, there, there's a lot of issues. And then there's serial, where you basically you could take one wire, or not necessarily one wire, but taking a wire and sending information um, kind of back to back. So you send, if you wanted, Eight bits or eight pieces of information, you'd send it back to back. So you said the first first bit, second bit, third bit, fourth bit. You said in a row. You def you define this is how long it's going to take for each of the bits. Um, so that that's sort of the first part. The second part is clocking. So when I was talking about the incrementing of time, 
digital computers basically work, you know how clock speed. And what it eventually comes down to is how fast your clock is moving. That's how fast data can progress through your system. You can have more lines and you can parallelize it more, but a, as you increment your clock, you have to push it through. And so this, this, is, this is what, this is your computer's notion of time. It doesn't understand time as like a, a, an actual clock or what you understand time. It understands time as whether it's going, this, this pulse that's going up and down. Uh, so yeah, it all space between zero and one. Next step, faster clock. You run into more electrical engineering problems. Um, electricity is an interesting thing. Uh, it's, it travels at the speed of light, but speed of light is different depending on what medium you're through. So it, it, it's, it's sort of like those things where, like if you talk, look at the speed of sound, you go underwater, you, you try to talk, it doesn't go very far. It's sort of like muffled, it's slow, or a few. Yes, it's those sorts of things. Like when you, when you talk to somebody in a different country, like really far away, there's a delay, because your data has to get there or something. And there, there, there's a fundamental limit, like when they did the, the Mars, no, no, the, 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 the satellite, not the satellite, the little robot that went in the asteroid, did you hear, hear of that? It, they, they couldn't do that in real time. They basically had to buffer up the commands and had, had to think for itself. They, you know, they, they knew like was it five minutes later that it actually worked from what, when it actually happened. So those sorts of things. The further the distance you go, the higher it is. But the faster you go, the other issues you run into in terms of it was the signal actually clean. Do you, do you trust the signal anymore? And the last one is the data encoding. So now you have all these lines, ones and zeros. What do they mean? So you have, you have, you have to, there's no fundamental meaning to them. You can go like binary numbers, but at some point you have to Im imply meaning into those. Like what is A or what is a press? What is key 13? And depending on what your requirements are, those can change. Yeah, that's very basic. So, <coughs> this is a much easier picture. Parallel, lots of lines, here's all your bits. One, uh, zero through seven, because computers, computers have zero. That's an engineering thing, uh, computer science thingy. Um, and then a serial, serial interface is, so you have the same amount of information, but you have all of them in, in, sort of in sequence. Uh, that, that's basically the difference. But you can do the same thing. Tech, theoretically, this is faster, but there's only one line. If there's one broken, you you know you can fix it. It's like you just fix one line. If three of these are broken, it takes a long time to fix this one. So parallel bus, you use one pin for data. You usually have to have another pin for clocking, or you have to have some sort of um, negotiated speed that you're running the clock at. So when, when is the next time instance? When do you want to set something new? Um, pros and faster in serial theory. Um, that's not actually in practice. I'm almost everything nowadays is serial because of error rates. Uh, PCI Express is all serial. P PCI, the original, was often called parallel communication interface because it actually used a parallel bus. There's a lot of there's a lot of pins. They don't just use one one line for everything. They use a lot of lines. But it's all serial information rather than parallel. Um, cons is more, it's expensive. The more, more pins you have, that if you, when you build a microchip, the biggest cost you have is your pin account. That is the most expensive thing to make. Microchip, because it's big compared to the transistors. Serial bus, sequentially, that, that's the serial. Um, minimum, you only need one pin. Sometimes you want a clocking, so that you don't have to negotiate. But yeah. Fewer pins, cheaper cables. Pro, the con is that it can be complicated. I showed you very simple, like on or off, but you can have complicated things where you merge in the clock with the data. So you actually, it, zero and one don't mean zero and one. Zero can mean zero, but the next zero actually means one. And then the next one is actually, yeah. It, it, it gets complicated in that you're trying to merge the clock and data so you're trying to get rid of problems with uh, having extra lines. So for example, fiber optics. You, only, you want as few, few fiber optic lines as possible because these lasers are really expensive. 
So you want to you want to encode everything into that one one line. So you try to put all the things you can, and then it gets complicated. So you, that's where you actually really do need an EE degree to figure it out. Um, yeah. here's, here's another example of uh, serial. Um, in this one, we have a, we actually have a clock, so it's, it's a lot easier to explain. So we have here's the first bit, it's zero, and so this clock here tells tells us here is that um, either on the, the, the low or the high, the transmitter is telling the receiver that it's good to read the, the, the data because you have to know when it's okay to read. Because this, this looks all perfect. In the real world, it's not this perfect. The, 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 the signals in the real world don't look like this, this nice. Um, so basically, you, you try to you tell your computer, I want to read right here, so this is bit zero. Right here, right here, right here. So as it progresses through, you can record on your computer. Um, on this one, it's the, there's no clock here. I'm just using one pin. And what, what you do first is that you, you pre-negotiate, you define how what my speed is. So you don't need the clock from before. And, th and this way you only need one pin, but you do not, not flexible. You can't say, I want to go faster, I want to go slower. You have to negotiate both sides ahead of time. Okay, data transmission. So now we're actually getting to keyboard stuff. So fundamentally, a keyboard has four states for every switch. Press, hold, release, and off. Now, arguably, you could say press and off are the only two states. But not really. So when you what you what you think of when you press a keyboard, there's you played WoW. You didn't play WoW here. I didn't play WoW, but I know I do know this of WoW that it would only register a key when you released it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of annoying, but it's it it, it it's a feature. And so now, now it's, it's one of those, those, bag, those baggage pieces now that the world has to deal with. Because it did exist at one point, you just can't not do it because someone's going to ask for it. Or it, And there are certain cases where it is useful to do things like that. So for example, somebody asked me, can I make shift a escape key? So if I press shift A, I should get to capital A. But if I just type tap shift, I want escape. And the only way you can really sensibly do that, or well, there's two ways. You could have a timer. You could you could time down. It's like this is, if, if I just tap it and this is make like escape. Or if I if I say if I release shift and nothing else was pressed along with it, I'll do escape. So this is this is why something like release is very important. Um, other parts are input. You have your LEDs. So USB. All LED states are handled by the computer, and it basically just tells the keyboard. I want caps lock, I want unlock, and there's key rollover. How many keys can I press at the same time? That's an important, important question. There's one of those keyboards there has one key rollover. <coughs> Not physically, but that's the protocol. That's all it can do. USB is the other important part because at some point, make a converter, you've got to tell it how to do USB. Bluetooth is very is, is sort of similar. It's based off the USB that's that. It's what people are in basically industry standard for this is what a keyboard does. Yeah, it has, it has a press release model which is very useful. So you say when I press like something, when I release something. Uh, not all keyboards have that. Who makes that spec USB hit? There is a USB there's a committee USB.org. USB.org USB <laughs> it's not like I triple E or anything. No, it's, it's its own thing. You have to buy into like be on the committee and stuff. There's some things I'd like to change about it. <laughs> I don't have enough money. It's a typical corporate standards body. Yeah. yeah. But are they defining like uh, just a high level protocol, or is there an electrical spec they're defining? It's electrical everything. 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 All the way up. All the way down. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So the hit spec defines what the the OS should implement on the, devi on the device side, as well as what the OS should do afterwards. Um, now. When I was talking about NP rollover earlier, I had to basically use the spec to limit, to to because the spec defines that it's possible, but nobody really tested for it. So, 
everybody has their own weird quirks about how they didn't really follow the spec properly. And you just can't say, oh, when, oh Microsoft, you have a bug in your, in your hit stack. It's like, but all these other keyboards already work. Yeah. See, so and even if I they did, did even if they yeah. did fix it, yeah. what about the older versions? Like I, I, I can't just say, oh, you have to use Windows 8.1, uh, like if you use this keyboard. That's 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 stupid. Um, so, yeah. and I, I don't want to have to write a driver because then I have to maintain a driver, which is even worse. Um, yeah. So it, it gets down to that. Like I have to identify all these issues, and yeah, like there's some there's some weird Linux bugs with NQ rollover, and I can get them to fix it, but they're not going to fix it in all the old, the crafty versions of Linux. So, it's, yeah. Uh, one annoying thing though is layouts are handled by the OS. This is this simplifies making keyboards. This complicates if you want to use different languages. So if there's no negotiated spec in terms of how do I change the language. So English it doesn't matter. This is one language, basically. There's only one here. Say, but for example, if you're Russian. You commonly switch between Russian and English because you need English language to type on the internet. Not so much anymore, but like 10 years ago you did. And so you're, you're constantly switching back and forth, but that has to be handled by the OS. So when I worked for, uh, when I worked on the EPC, this was a really big problem because the co commonly switching, like, what's the shortcut to do that? Like, it's, it's not, you, you, you can map what Windows does, but that's not what all the software does. On the system, it's not it's not a standard, or there there are standards, but nobody follows them. Um, so that, that's a really annoying thing, and I can't outcode output Unicode. If I could just outcode Unicode, it'd be all great, but it, that USB doesn't work that way. Sort of, yeah. sort of. I'm 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 in the future. I'm investigating ways to do Unicode, but I, I will likely need to write a driver. Um, at this point, is it possible for a device to detect the the OS or implementation of the host side USB? Not really. Okay. The the keyboard itself has no other than the provision for whether the USB has a provision I mentioned earlier is for boot mode, which is a really dumbed down version of USB spec. It will only spend in certain order. So basically, a BIOS can play. BIOS is usually really small. So they want the stupidest thing they could possibly get. Um, and they're really bad about it. And then you have like, the full version where you can do and you roll over, you can do all the fancy things you want. But basically, mo most keyboards now just follow the boot spec because that's what everybody did, and nobody needed any key rollover until recently. Well, actually, they did. It's just as industries got trumped by one another, the key keyboards kept getting cheaper, and they kept forgetting about what a keyboard does. They just copied each cheap keyboard and made it cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. So yeah, that. That was bad. <laughs>